Now, we learned about namespace before, and so one of the things that's important about the idea of namespaces is variables that are inside of a function cannot be accessed outside of that function. Remember those little boxes? We drew them and we said, you can't access the variable outside. But there are ways around this problem, and so we're going to deal with this now by looking at return values. So when you think about a return value, you should think of it's a way of a function giving back a value. The idea is we the function does some comp computation or asks the user for some input, whatever it might be, and now we need to return that value back to somewhere else. So these return values can then be stored in a variable. So for example, we've seen the len function a lot, looked at the length of strings, things like that. And so we can say len, we call the function, and we give it some sort of parameter. And what it's going to then do is it's going to return a value that we can store inside of a variable. And that's what it means to return something. And all you have to do to return is use the word return. Convenient. And now you're able to get something outside of a function, which is normally otherwise be stuck in there, and access it later. So in syntax, it looks like this. You simply define your function as normal, just like you would have before, except the very last thing is you're going to have return and then a value. You can return anything that you want. String, int, float, doesn't matter. But as soon as you say return, it's kind of a way of kicking out that value outside of the function uh, namespace. Then, once you kick that value out, you're able to store the value inside of the function call. So again, here we have the function call is being made. It's returning a value which you can then store. In this case, this trick works here because the function name, it's going to return a value, and that value would then get printed, printed out. So it's the same kind of idea. But either way, that's how we can get a value out of a function. So just a couple of examples. Here's our basic function. Notice it takes an input, and it returns something. So you can return and have input, both, neither. It's up to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this value and we're just going to return it. So when I say doubler of 2, what we're going to do is it's going to store, obviously, 4. So 2 comes up here. This becomes 4, and this is given the value of 4. So now it's going to print out 4, which is what you would expect when you print num. Or you can just use doubler directly, doubler 2.2. .2. Again, it's going to take 2.2 going to multiply it by 2, and it's going to return it, which is why you get 4.4. And here's the example we saw earlier, where if you do high, it's going to add them together, and you'll get high, high. So you can store a value that's returned in a variable like this, or you can just print it directly with the print function. And the last point about this is just to make a little bit of a distinction between something called a side effect and a return value. So return value is what we just talked about. Return value is you can return something from a function. So this is the only way to get a value out of a function. Right? And we learned that you simply say return. Once you do that, you can then store it, print it out, do whatever you need to do with that variable, because it's returned outside. Now a side effect is sl slightly different. What a side effect is, is, and this is sort of a vague definition, it's a general change in the program state other than your return value. A simpler way to think about it is, it's anything that you notice that changes when you run the function, except the return value. So, the biggest example that we use all the time is printing. So anytime you print something in a function, we call that a side effect. So for example, if I was looking at this function, I would say, oh, it has a side effect because it calls print. Now, where the confusion comes in with this is that you cannot store side effects outside of a function. So side effects basically are for printing. Um, we'll later on learn about saving files, um, whatever else you might want to be doing, sending a tweet, opening a database, anything that you want to do that doesn't involve returning a value, we would consider a side effect. But notice that this is an error because what's happening is there's no return, right? This function does not return anything. So when you try to store the value, it's fine that you printed out something, 
but nothing is returned, so you would get an error. So just be careful. Return and side effect, they're slightly different. And the last thing I'll say is we've actually been using functions all semester. So we first day of class, we talked about this idea. We said there was this magic code you had to define, define main and main. And we said that we promised we would explain this when we came back to this point. And now here we are. So we can come full circle and say, this is what we've been doing. So we've been defining a function and calling it. Now, we call this the main function. Now, in most, in many programming languages, main is often used as a starting point for a larger program. Uh, we would say that it contains your main program, meaning the, the primary part of your code is often inside of a main function. Um, now, one quick note. In Python, the word main doesn't actually mean anything special. It's just that we often, in many other languages, use main as a reserved or special start of our program. And so in this course, to kind of keep things consistent, we do use the word main, and that is where our code starts. But realize that in Python as a language, that's not a particular requirement. So a couple things we need to know about main, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, we're going to call all of the functions from main. So main is our main driver, we sometimes say, that executes all the other function calls. Main will never take any arguments and it will never return a value. These are our sort of our conventions, common conventions and conventions we use in this class, not that they can't do that in Python. Functions can be defined in any order that you want um, as long as you call main at the very end. So we kind of get around the problem of which order do you find the functions by simply calling main at the very end. So that's going to be our trick. So essentially what we end up having is code that from now on is going to look like this. So we're going to define a function. We might have many other functions. You might have five or six functions all defined. You're also going to define main. And notice right here, so here's our square function. And inside of main, we call that function. And we might call any other function that we define. And then at the very end of our code, we will actually execute the call to main. And at that point, our program will then start.